Good afternoon, happy Saturday. It is March 9th, 2024. It's good to be alive. Um, so I wanted to kind of just quickly discuss, and this is going to be a short video, um, something that kind of irritates me when I hear people talking about uh, appendix carry. So a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> a lot of folks, they seem to think that appendix carry is unsafe. Um, and, you know, maybe about, I've only been carrying appendix maybe about, maybe a, a, year, a year and a half. Yeah, but I've always been... I haven't always, you know, I never considered it when I first started, I guess, uh, my gun journey. Um, I always thought that strong side was for me. Um, I never, so, so usually with guns, anything guns, there's always like us versus them. So in my opinion, it doesn't matter. Uh, the more options that people have to carry, the freer we are in general um the last thing we need is someone to be telling us how to do things with guns and we disdain it when when the anti-gunner does it what what makes that any you know what makes it any difference if a if a gun advocate or so-called gun advocate does it in my opinion there's no difference um so you know i i i always say uh, the worst critic or the, the worst folks that we have to deal with are ourselves because we always fight amongst ourselves when it, you know, when it comes to things such as, you know, you have a lot of people that disdain open carry. I don't do it. I can see why people don't like it, but it's an option for some folks. Um, we should not be telling people how to carry. Uh, you know all the different nuances and, and that includes appendix carry uh, so there was a time where all I was doing was I was carrying strong side but I was always I'm always trying to learn different things right uh, so in order to learn different things you have to be somewhat open to, to things that you might or might not like you know so that means you have to have an ear open. You have to be willing to kind of, you might not like it, but you're willing to kind of listen to someone talk about it. So the more I heard people talking about it, the less, I guess, uh, the less I would build up a wall against it. Um, and so at one point, you know, I, I just said, well, how about I'll, I give it a shot. And so I, I did. I bought a holster. Um, I had to pick a gun that that I you know, that I was familiar with that I thought it might be a good way to kind of carry. I wanted something with a safety, um, so I carried my commander size 1911 uh, in my first efforts to appendix carry. Um, I made sure that I had a decent uh, holster. I made sure that I had a decent belt. So, really, what I wanted to talk about was. The fact that there's a little bit of angst you always see someone say be sarcastic they throw the meme out there like uh you're gonna blow your dick off um which is is fucking it, it's stupid you know and I'm, why is it stupid because we always you know and i see that all the time uh, th that's the first thing that you'll see when someone talks about appendix carry uh and i don't understand that because when we when we when we're fighting off anti gunners when they want to you know when they're trying to push anti gun legislation like for instance uh you know they they always tout that um guns kill people and and we need to regulate guns and the first argument and it's a smart argument the first argument we as gun owners have is it's not the gun that's the issue. It's the person that's wielding the gun. Guns are tools. Guns don't think for themselves. Guns don't go off by themselves. Guns don't... I mean, it requires... 
a person to pull the trigger. Triggers don't go off by themselves. So if you take that, what we always preach to them, you take that and apply it to the argument that so-called gun advocates make when, when carrying uh, appendix carry, they always say, you're going to blow your junk off. Or, you know, no, you know, you're not. If you're practicing the safety rules, keep your finger off the trigger. Don't be directly pointing it at your junk. Even if your finger's off the trigger, the gun's not going to go off. The gun doesn't have a mind of its own. In order for the gun to go off, you have to have failed in some aspect of reholstering. Uh, if, you, if you don't have your finger on the trigger and the gun goes off, maybe there's something that got trapped between the holster and the trigger when you're reholstering. That's shirt tail, uh, part of your belt, part of the holster, you know, things like that. Um, if, if that happens, you've failed. You failed you, not the gun. So, I mean, it, it requires you to be extra diligent, but it does give you those, you know, those certain advantages. You always have the gun in front of you. Um, you don't have to worry about someone sneaking up behind you if they think that you have a gun and, and you might have a gun. Maybe you're printing. Uh, you become, you may as well be open, you know, like carrying at that point because you're, you're, you're going to be the first one that a thief or a burglar or an armed person that's doing bad things, you're going to be the first thing that he tries to kind of get rid of because otherwise you're going to be a hindrance, right? Well, if the gun is in front of you, it makes it much more difficult for someone to sneak up on you. Yes, they can still sneak up on you, but they're not taking the gun. Um, as well, it gives you, you know, if your gun's right in front of you, your hands are here. You, it, you it's better. It's a, you know, the gun's in a better position for you to draw it while fending off whoever's in front of you, uh, if they're attacking you, right? I mean, there's multiple pros for this. It, you can access it quicker. Um, you can, you can draw an appendix, you know, a gun that's in an, in an appendix position. You can draw that shit super quick. Um, so, uh, most people forget you see uh, these people doing these drills all the time. Even my, my favorite YouTube entities, they're doing the drills and they're telling, you know, they're teaching you like basic, you know, marksmanship or intermediate marksmanship or any type of marksmanship. You know, they're, they're doing the thing, they're being a good advocate, but at the same time, they're not because immediately after they, you know, after their, their shot timer, you know, after they've done their shots and they're looking at their shot timer, they immediately holster the gun and it's like they're blindly holstering that gun. You know, it's like it's teaching folks to kind of just do the same thing. You know, they see their favorite YouTuber doing it. They think it's OK. There there should never be a rush to holster a gun, especially if it's in that position. Uh, you're going to end up blowing your dick off. You know, uh, there should never be a rush. Um, I even somewhat push my pelvis out because there is a chance uh, that you're muzzling yourself when you're holstering. And you know what, for the most part, that applies to all types of holstering, you know, all types of carry positions. If you're, if you're carrying strong side, nine times out of 10, you're at some point, you're going to be muzzling your leg, uh, muzzling your ass cheek. And people, when, when they have negligent discharges, when they're holstering on a strong side, typically they either get powder burns on their on their ass cheek or they actually blow a hole in their ass cheek or their leg um so i mean i i you know I, most people they they kind of they look at testicles and then they look at someone's buttock or leg and and when you think about where would i rather get shot someone's always saying i'd rather take it in the buttocks than than in my crotch pain is fucking pain it you know uh, a gunshot, I'm pretty sure it's not going to matter where, where you get shot. It's going to fucking hurt. It's not going to hurt any more in a crotch than it is in your ass. It's not. I mean, at that point, it's like, yes, the, the sensitive bits, 
uh, they're more sensitive in the crotch area. There's probably more nerve endings. But at that point, if you've blown a hole in that area, you've blown away nerve endings. You're not gonna you you're not gonna feel shit at first. You're gonna probably be shocked, and then pain's gonna hit. But it's gonna be the same type of pain as if you got shot in the ass, you got shot in the arm, uh, you got shot in the head. You know, it's gonna be the same shit. So so you know, I don't understand the logic of. It's more dangerous to carry uh, appendix. Uh, another argument I see is, well, there's more of a chance for you to hit a femoral artery. Um, but I, I do believe I, when I was when I was doing research, I do believe I saw someone pointing at some type of uh, substantiating evidence that indicated that you're just as likely to hit a femoral artery when you're carrying strong side because the femoral artery, it's not in a it's not just in the crotch. It's running all down your leg. And so, like I was saying earlier, uh, there have been there have been many cases where someone, uh, in, in, the, in the effort to, to quickly holster, uh, they've erred and, you know, that trigger went off. And they blew a hole in their butt cheek, but the bullet ended up going out of their heel. So that means the bullet navigated all the way down that leg. And guess what's in that, that leg from top to bottom? The femoral artery. So there is just, a, a, there's the same chance. There have been people who have, who have shot themselves in the, in, the, in the abdomen and did not hit their femoral artery. artery. It, it totally probably depends on the gun, exactly what type of holster you're using, and what angle you're carrying because you can tilt it left or right, you know, this way or that way so that you can can't get, you know, the can't that you uh, prefer. Um, so everything is personal. Not everything is is going to mean that, you know, bad just because you carry appendix. Um, but really what it boils down to is if, if you're inherently unsafe or impulsive or or always in a rush to do something uh, you're gonna fuck up you're gonna fuck up if you do, if you're like that in regular life it, you're going to eventually you're going to fuck up um it, you should never be you know I, i'm not in everything that i do i don't slow poke around what i'm saying is is that when it comes to safety you kind of got to know when to start kind of slowing down and paying attention to what you're doing, especially when it comes to a, a firearm. And you're, you know, you're you're trying not to, you know, point it at your body. But by nature, you're you're almost certainly going to be muzzling yourself with the exception of if you're carrying uh, on a shoulder holster. And guess what? The calm with carrying in a shoulder holster is when you holster the gun. You're putting it this way. You you might be muzzling someone behind you, and you will, you might not even know it because the gun is going to be pointing like this. You know, so I mean, there's a there's a pro and a con to every single method of carry. Maybe with the exception of carrying on your ankle or some shit like that. But again, you got muzzle blast if, if you have a negligent di discharge on an ankle holster. You might hit your foot. You might hit part of your leg. If anything, you might at least get burned by the muzzle blast, especially if you're carrying something like a revolver, high-powered revolver. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, there's inherent danger with anything related to firearms. It's, it's dependent upon you to try and slow down and make sure that you're doing things right so that uh, you're more, you know, you're as safe as possible. And it's not just you. It could be someone else too. Like for instance, I was talking about the, 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 the shoulder holster, the shoulder rig. Um, if you're not careful, you might not injure yourself, but you might injure someone else or kill them. So, uh, you know, in my opinion, it's very important to kind of be cognizant that there is no 100% safe way of carrying uh, the safest thing is using your head. Uh, you know, the meme is 
this is my safety this is my safety as well along with the other safeties of the gun along with using smart ways of holstering so i mean really that that's it um it's it you know this was meant to be like a maybe a sub 10 minute video we're at 16 minutes so it's still not bad i packed a lot of information into there um i know that some people are going to leave some shitty comments um i don't care um those people who who know how to how to do you know do appendix carry right um leave a comment those who don't know how to do it but have questions uh leave comments leave questions those who just want to make fun of things or ridicule folks don't leave a comment um because if you do leave a comment i am just going to remove it and i'm going to remove you from being able to access the channel uh i don't i don't i don't play a lot of games in my in my comment section uh i'm i'm doing this for a reason um if you can kind of refute what i'm saying do it in a in a in a way that's uh constructive um i don't mind that i don't mind being proven wrong um it's all about how it comes across if you be an asshole even though you know that you're right and you can prove it you're going to get removed uh, because i'm trying to foster discussion and communication any type of assholery is not going to fit into that so uh i'm saying this because I see this a lot of times people try and discuss it and there's always a few folks who kind of just take it and try and meld it to to be funny or critical. Um I'm not playing games. You know, uh just keep it keep it nice. Um and again, if you have something to offer that I missed, let me know. You know, we can discuss it in the comments or we can I can I can mention that in a follow on video. Uh, we're, we're doing this all to learn from each other, uh, whether or not it's a critique or whether or not it's, got, you know, a, you know, a praise. Um, so that's it. Uh, happy weekend, guys.